Hello everyone. I am Dr. Parul Malhotra, Associate Professor, Jagannath University, Jaipur. In continuation of the previous videos that was on models of communication, their uses and limitations, I am beginning with the next video, which will in which we will uh, study about various models of communication. So the first model that we will be talking about the Aristotle's model. It is one of the oldest model of communication and uh, it's a simple uh, model which says uh, which has five elements. It says speaker gives a speech on an occasion to the audience to cast an impact or to cast an effect. So let us understand this model in much uh, detail. Uh, this model of communication was also known as rhetorical model of communication. It is a conceptual framework proposed by Aristotle in his work on rhetoric. Aristotle was the first to take an initiative and design the communication model. While it may not resemble the model communication models in terms of complexity, it provides fundamental insights into the communication process. Let us look at what are those fundamental insights into the communication process. According to Aristotle, communication involves three key elements. The first is the speaker, that is the orator. The speaker is the sender of the message. He or they possess knowledge and expertise on the subject matter and use persuasive techniques to present their ideas effectively. Next the key element is audience. The audience refers to the receivers or listeners of the message. They play a crucial role in the communication process as they interpret and respond to the speaker's messages. And the third key element is the message itself. The message encompasses the content or information that the speaker intends to convey. It includes arguments, facts, examples and appeals aimed at persuading the audience. So hence the three key elements are the person who is sending the message that is the speaker, the audience who are receiving the messages as they interpret the message and the third is the message itself, the content which is being sent by the speaker to the audiences. According to Aristotle, speaker plays an important role in public speaking. He advises that speaker gives speech for different audiences on different times, that is on different occasions and for different effects. The speaker must prepare his speech and analyze audience needs before he delivers his speech. His words should influence audience mind and persuade their thoughts towards him. What here exactly Aristotle wants to say is, that when speaker is delivering a speech to a particular audience, he should always keep in mind that on what occasion he is talking and what impact his speech would cast on the audience. That is, that speaker must prepare his speech before analyzing the audience. That he has to, first of all, sorry, after analyzing the audience, he has to analyze what are their audience, what are their needs and on what occasion he is delivering the speech. I would uh, rather give you a, an example here like speaker is Alexander and the speech is about his invasion. The occasion becomes uh, the war field that is before the beginning of the war and the audience are the soldiers. What Alexander wants to say to his soldiers is that they want to defeat Persia in the war and his speech is accordingly molded to motivate his soldiers for the war field. Let us uh, taking this take this example only and let us change the occasion. The occasion becomes that is what they have won the war. The rest of the things remain the same. The speaker remains the same here Alexander. The audience remain the same soldiers. The occasion is also the war field. But what happens is here what he is, the place is war field but what here is talking about they have now defeated the Persia. So the speech changes from motivation to the appreciation. So this is how uh, the speaker has to mold his speech according to the audience. I'll give you one more example here. Like uh, suppose uh, 
a professor is addressing uh, the students on the very first day of the college that is the uh, orientation day that we call as and the speech is entirely different he is telling them about uh, the college life the new phase of the students life about the college telling them the rules regulations the course they have taken admission into and everything which is related to the three or four years life of a student in a college if he is addressing the same students after the completion of the course that is at the time of the convocation the speech entirely changes from an orientation speech to a convocation or a goodbye speech telling them about the nuances of the industry how the corporate world behaves and wishing them good luck for their future so the audience is same here but the occasion changes and accordingly the speech also changes so alexander emphasized here that for a speaker to understand what his audience and on what occasion he has uh, he is speaking he can cast uh, the impact on audience then coming to the next uh, step of this model aristotle also identified three persuasive appeal or the modes of persuasion focusing uh, on how he he how a speaker can persuade the audience that is ethos pathos and logos ethos focuses on establishing the speaker's credibility and the ethical character the first thing that the speaker should keep in mind is that he has to build the trust among the audience demonstrate his expertise integrity and the authority of the subject on which he is speaking so that is the ethos then comes pathos pathos is the appeal to the emotions of the audience the speaker must use some story telling vivid languages some emotional appeals to get some specific emotional responses from the audience i must tell you here pathos can never come before ethos first of all the speaker has to build a trust demonstrate his expertise integrity and authority on the subject that yes he knows about everything and he is a knowledgeable professional in this particular field through his maybe personality and the first few words that he or first few sentences he speaks then in uh, then he can actually uh, mold them through some emotional stories or story languages or some vivid images and languages and try to make them emotional and get the emotional response responses from the audience then come logos it emphasizes the logical and the rational appeal of the messages that is ki once you have established yourself get got the emotional appeal from the audience then you present arguments evidences and then you logically support your claim and persuade the audience only then you will be able to create an impact that is first of all establish yourself build the trust with the audience uh, make them emotional using some storytelling and vivid languages so that they are lured into your speaking and then last is providing certain logical reasoning that they believe in you and they are affected by your speech so here's a diagram uh, which explains the process of ethos pathos and logos that when speaker first of all speak that is he is talking about pathos Uh, ethos then he moves to pathos and then he moves to logos so aristotle's model highlights the importance of effective communication techniques including understanding the audience establishing credibility appealing to the emotions and employing logical arguments while it is a simplified model compared to modern communication theories it laid the foundation for subsequent developments in the field of communication studies let us understand through another simple situation in a political meeting the prospective leader delivers speech to the audience urging for more votes from the constituency he tries to convince the crowd in the best possible way so he can so that he emerges as a winner what he is actually doing let us understand in the form of ethos and pathos he is delivering his speech first of all he is establishing himself as a leader so that he is able to build a rapport with the audience then he is delivering a speech in a manner that the listeners would get convinced and cast their votes only in his favor that is he is establishing himself as a leader then um, delivering his speech in a manner that he is able to emotionally move uh, the 
voters and then finally giving a logical reasoning that what would happen that if he becomes the leader of their area what would be the benefit that the audience would be getting so they would get convinced and cast their votes only in his favor or in other words respond in the manner the speaker wanted to so here the leader or the speaker or the send, sender is the center of attraction and the crowd simply are the passive listeners the example actually explains the aristotle model of communication through this model the speaker plays a key role in communication he is the one who takes complete charge of the communication the sender first prepares a content which he does by carefully putting his thoughts in the words with an objective of influencing the listeners or the recipients or the voters who would then respond in the sender's desired way no points in guessing that the content has to be very very impressive in this model for the audience or the receivers to get convinced the model says that speaker communicates in such a way that listeners gets get influenced and respond accordingly the speaker must be very careful about the selection of words and content in this model of communication he should understand his target audience and then prepare his speech making eye contact with the second party is again a way must to create an impact among the listeners let us again through go through this first example the politician must understand the needs of the people in his constituency like what they need a shopping mall a better transport system safety of girls and then design a speech his speech should address all the above issues and focus on providing the solutions to their problem to expect minimum maximum votes for them if he does not uh, include such things in his speech then yes it would be hard for him to get the votes or hard for him to get them convinced that is understanding the entire situation the entire audience and then addressing them voice tone and pitch should also be loud and clear enough for the people to hear and understand the speech properly stammering getting nervous in between of a conversation must be avoided voice modulation here also plays a very important role in creating the desired impact blank expressions confused looks and similar pitch all through the speech make it monotonous and nullify its effect the speaker should know where to lay more stress on highlight which words to influence the listener and these are certain keywords that is key things that any speaker can keep in mind and uh, can cast the desired impact on the audience aristotle was the first to take an initiative and design the communication model one will definitely purchase the mobile handset from the store where the salesman gives an impression demo of the mobile it depends on the salesman what to speak how to speak in a manner to influence the listener so that they respond to him in a way he actually wants that is purchase the handset and increase his billing this is an another example of this particular model this model of communication given by aristotle is the widely accepted and the most common model of communication where the sender sends the information or a message to the receiver to influence them and make them respond and act accordingly aristotle's model of communication is the golden rule to excel in public speaking seminars lectures where the sender makes his point clear by designing an imp impressive content passing on the message to the second part and they simply respond accordingly the second part is the audience here the sender is the active member and the receiver is the passive so here we finish with the aristotle model that's an aristotle one of the oldest model of communication that applies to public speaking now let us come to the next model of communication that is the loswell or loswells model this model was given by harold loswell that is why it's been named so harold uh, loswells model Harold Loswell, a political scientist, studied very carefully the American presidential elections in 1948. Based on his studies on the process of political campaigning and the propagandas, he introduced an important model, elements of which survive in more developed modern models. That is the model the elements given by loswell in his model are still being used in the modern contemporary models what is his model 
he gave a very simple model of communication and it usually applies to mass communication which goes like this who says what in which channel to whom with what effect again i repeat who says what in which channel to whom with what effect the who is the source here says what is the message and to whom is the destination communications have a source that communicates a message through a channel or medium to the destination that hopefully creates the desired impact Lossell put the fourth one of the basic but significant communication models with a social scientific background in 1948 This model gives importance to the communicator and his message but like in Aristotle model the feedback was not included so here also the feedback is not included and the emphasis is on the sender on the message and the receiver but uh, i would say that like in aristotle model the emphasis was on the speaker the occasion and what he is speaking so here the emphasis was on the sender that is the speaker what he is uh, speaking and what channel he is using uh, this is uh, of the prime importance the element of feedback was not there in the aristotle's model it is also not there in the lossell's model however this model had helped improving the understanding about communication among social scientists engaged in communication theories this model was useful in political communication propaganda and political symbolism the model also assumes the communicator wishes to influence the receiver and therefore sees communication as a persuasive process the lossell model is often described using the following question based formulas who says what through which channel to whom with what effect let's break down each component i would repeat it again and it should be like for i rather say that for every media student this model should be learned by them by heart that is who says what in which channel to whom with what effect it is simply like this so let us understand each component one by one who refers to the sender a source of the communication it can be an individual a group an organization or an entity that initiates the communication process says what this refer to the message being communicated it represents the content information or ideas that the sender wants to convey to the receiver through which channel that is the third element the channel refers to the medium or method used to transmit the message it can be face to face conversation television radio print media social media or any other form of communication channel then to whom becomes the receiver or the audience of the communication it represents the individuals or groups for whom the message is intended then the last element with what effect this component focuses on the impact or effect of the communication on the receiver it explores the desired or actual outcome of the communication process such as informing persuading entertaining or mobilizing the audience right the lossell model emphasizes the essential elements involved in the communication process it highlights the importance of considering the sender message channel receiver and effect to better understand how communication functions and what are its potential outcomes however it is worth noting that the lossell model is a simplified representation of communication and does not account for various factors such as feedback noise context and the dynamic nature of communication interactions nevertheless it provides a useful starting point for analyzing and discussing the communication process right like, so now let us come to the third uh, model of communication which is uh, mathematical theory and shannon and weaver model they both are the same model at times this model is also called as the mathematical model of communication and shannon and weaver model of communication as well let us understand why it is called a mathematical model in 1948 shannon was an american mathematician 
electronic engineer and Weaver was an American scientist. Both of them joined together to write an article in Bell System Technical Journal called a Mathematical Theory of Communication and also called as Shannon Weaver Model of Communication. This model is specifically designed to develop the effective communication between sender and receiver. That is, they were writing an article together for a journal named Bell System Technical Journal. And the name of their paper was a mathematical theory of communication. So this model came to be termed as mathematical model, mathematical theory or Shannon and Weaver model. Why they were developing this communication model? They wanted to identify that how an effective communication can take place between sender and receiver. And they also found during their research that communication process is affected by thing that is called as noise. You must have seen in the earlier model, we did not talk about noise, we did not talk about feedback. Why? Because their founders did not mention these two things. But it was founded by Shannon and Weaver while their research that there is some disturbance or interferences between the communication process and that is called as noise. So they tried uh, various methods through which noise can be minimized. So it was like it was developed to improve the technical kind of a communication that is it can happen after second world war era that is how technically we can communicate using two technological devices and then later this model was widely applicable applied in the field of communication. So it was uh, developed by Claude Schoner Warrer Weaver in 1955 a widely recognized and influential model. It provides a linear framework for understanding the process of communication and has been influential in shaping the field of communication theory. So this is the model that is uh, given by Shannon and Weaver. That is there is an information source. Then there is a transmitter that is the encoder who actually transmits the messages through some encoder who actually which actually not uh, encodes the message but transmits the message also so this is a kind of a technical communication like when we are using a phone or when we are using a walkie talkie wireless or any kind of technical communication so whatever the sender is saying is usually transmitted using a uh, transmitter or a device like phone is acting as a transmitter my messages are converted to a signal and those are being uh, transmitted in the form of the signals and those signals are received by the another device that is called as the receiver that is the another set receives the signal and then these signals are given to the actual destination that is the person so here the source and the destination are the person transmitter and receiver are the devices and always in these uh, technical communication noise is a kind of an interference so this model is quite different from the other two that we have studied. They were uh, paying emphasis on sender. They were paying emphasis uh, on the impact a message creates. They were also paying emphasis on what occasion the speaker is speaking or what medium uh, the sender is using. But what here Shannon and Weaver wanted to say is that how technically we can communicate. They did not pay emphasis on feedback or they did not talk about the impact or the occasion. They were simply talking that technically how sender and receiver can communicate and that for technical communication you need uh, signals you, signals are involved in technical communication and for sending those signals and for receiving those signals you need two devices so one is the transmitter and the other is the receiver and then there is a noise in between the devices the model consists of the following elements there is a sender let us study them one by one. The sender is the source or originator of the message. It can be an individual, group or organization that initiates the communication process. Then comes the encoder. The encoder is responsible for converting the message into a suitable form for transmission. It involves encoding the messages into a symbolic representation such as words, images or signals. Then comes the message. The message is the information or content being transmitted from the sender to the receiver. 
It can take various forms, including spoken words, written text, visual images, or any other medium for communication. Sometimes students get confused between the encoder and the message, but I'll just simplify it for you. See the message. Uh, let us take an example of a text message that you send over a WhatsApp chat. So here the medium that you are using is the telephone. You can say. Or the WhatsApp is your medium, and the message you are sending, hi and hello, how are you? These are your text messages that you are being sending. But what about the encoder? The telephone instrument actually is acting as an encoder here, that is converting your messages into words or images, and that is being directly received by the telephone set that the other person has in their hand. So the channel becomes your oral communication, the electronic channels, anything. So decoder is the thing again that interprets the message, decodes the message, and then converts it into a form that can be understood by the receiver. So here you can say the channel message and the encoder decoder they are actually interlinked. How they are interlinked? The two sets. It is the medium of communication only through which you are sending the text images or the text message or the visual messages or maybe or any song or this. And but for that, you need something which can encode your message into signals, and these signals can be received by the other sets. Like um, an anchor is using a mic, so he is communicating through mic. The mic is acting as an encoder. Then uh, the mic is connected to the amplifier, the speaker, the speaker acting as a decoder, receiving those signals, converting it into an understandable form, and then message the receivers are the audience who are actually listening to that anchor and who interpret the message. So it is actually not talking about the simple human communication, but it is the technical communication that how technology. Uh, helps in sending and receiving the message so probably here the receiver that is sorry the decoder the channel and the encoder are interlinked together i hope you understand the concept of encoder and decoder here then comes the noise noise refers to any interference or distortion that may affect the transmission or reception of the messages it can be any external noise like physical disturbances or any kind of a psychological noise that hinder the effective communication in one of my videos i have spoken about the barriers of communication in which we talked about different types of noise so you can refer to that particular video for types of noise but here when this particular model is being talked about the one is the technical disturbances the physical disturbances are there maybe uh, there is some technical fault due to which the encoder is not able to send the message further or maybe decoder is not able to receive the signals that is if you are at very high altitude or you are it in the basement you are not able to send or receive the signals or maybe any kind of psychological barrier in the mind of the receiver factor that does not let him understand the communication properly then feedback though feedback is missing here but yes feedback is an important element that responds represents the response or the reaction of the receiver to the message the shannon and weaver model emphasizes the technical and engineering aspect of communication focusing on the efficient transmission of information through channels as i mentioned earlier that how technical communication can take place it does not explicitly address the social cultural or any kind of contextual factors that can influence the communication it is a simple linear one way model explaining how communication can be done with the help of technology all right now let us come to one of the easiest models of communication that is the osgood model of communication this model is also known as the circular model of communication the model of communication this model was developed by c e osgood that is charles e osgood and it is different from the earlier attempts in the sense it does not follow the conventional pattern of communication from source to channel to receivers it describes communication as a dynamic process and says that a communication given communication event is uh, ongoing continuous and circular in nature osgood emphasized the point that each participant in the communication process sends as well as 
receives the messages as such he encodes decodes then interprets the messages thus according to him communication is a dynamic process in which there is an interactive relationship between the source and the receiver where a person may be source one moment or receiver the next and again a source the following moment this is particularly true in the interpersonal communication that is a sender and receiver they are keep for receiving the messages and they keep interactive interacting with each other you will understand this better with the help of a diagram you see here is an encoder he gives message to the decoder decoder understands the message that is he interprets the message and he becomes the encoder while he is giving message back to the actual encoder so when he is giving message back to the actual encoder he becomes the encoder and encoder becomes the decoder and this message or this process keeps on going so this says that communication is a two way process communication is a cyclic process it is a dynamic process it's a flexible process where encoder and decoder are exchanging their roles and the message is moving in cycle that is they are exchanging the messages they are exchanging the roles and while understanding the messages they become the interpreter so now understand this these elements one by one encoder who does encoding or sends the message that is the message originator decoder who receives the message interpreter interpreter person trying to understand the message analyze and the interpret here the encoder and decoder and the interpreter interpreter is one and the same person when encoder is understanding the message he becomes interpreter when decoder is understanding the message he becomes the interpreter this is the thing so this model breaks the sender and receiver model in a practical manner it's not actually a traditional model it usually happens within ourselves for the two people like if you are talking to somebody at home in your school in your college at your workplace anywhere when sender and receiver imagine that particular situation and try to understand who is the sender who is the receiver and who is the interpreter it is actually a simultaneous process you at one moment are encoding the message the other moment you are decoding the next moment again you are encoding and you are interpreting the messages at the same uh, point of time this model has found application in various fields including psychology marketing and communication studies it provides a structured and quantitative approach to understand and measure subjective evaluations and meanings associated with concepts the model has been used to explore attitudes preferences and perceptions in different domains of the research right this was one of the very easiest model and you can very easily understand it with the help of this sim simple diagram there is nothing much to explain here that is two people are involved sending and exchanging the messages and exchanging their roles as encoder decoder and while they are understanding the message they become the interpreter okay now let us come to the next model that is the wilbush cram's model wilbush cram a leading communication expert has provided an overview of the elements and openness of the communication to explore how these work in practically all forms of communication that is with ourselves with a one person or a group of person or communication with a mass audience or thousands and millions of people see uh, the previous models that we have done osgood model was applicable in uh, interpersonal communication situation where you are talking to two people right then uh, aristotle's uh, model was applicable only in the situation of public speaking similarly lossoy model is mostly applicable in the mass comm situations Uh, whereas Shannon and Weaver's model is applicable in the technical situation, but the Wilbur-Cram's model is usually applies to all the forms of communication, that is, with one person, with a group, with mass audience, or with uh, public, or in the case of public speaking. I'll explain it how. In fact, Shannon's Cram's contribution in conceptualizing communication is so important that it has helped in formulating a more acceptable explanation about the working of communication process. Wilbur Cram adopted Shannon and Weaver's model to human communication and introduced two concepts of encoder decoder redundancy feedback and noise into his model to explain the communication process in this model Cram has stressed the importance of feedback and noise which are considered essential elements of communication process 
the feedback refers to the response that a receiver makes to a source communication he formulated the following model i hope you can see this model that is there is a source there is an encoder he has taken certain excerpts from osgood and certain excerpts from uh, shannon and weaver's model and come out with his this new model that is there is a source and encoder that is i i just said that it applies to all the kinds of communication whether it is mass communication technical communication one way uh, one person two person group or public situations right then there is a decoder and then finally there is a destination then there is a noise and the interference so that are the disturbances but he added a field of experience in this model what do you now understand by the field of experience the field of experience talks about the field of references that is uh, your own attitudes your own uh, maybe the psychological factor through which you are sending the message and through which you are receiving the message so what scram wanted what uh, he emphasized was that whenever the field of experience of sender and receiver match only then can communication happen if the field of experience does not match then there cannot be there can be no communication or very uh, less communication and these uh, circles of field of experience they do not remain same as shown in this model the matching part can vary like a person whom you know from a longer period of time like your spouse maybe your family close relatives your very close friend you have an extra bonding extra longing to talk that means your field of experience is matched we say that we vibe with somebody and we do not vibe with some people so this is what the field of experience here says that is the field of experience of two people matches only then communication can occur otherwise there would be gaps right scram's models view of communication as a process wherein the message is transmitted using a medium by a sender to a receiver this is a simple communication pro process that we are talking the message is encoded by the sender sent using correct verbal and visual symbols and then transmitted the receiver decodes the message and can respond to this message from the sender which will confirm the correct reception of the message that was sent thus a feedback loop is created the concept of noise interferences and field of experience was included in this model by scram let us understand these new concepts that were introduced by scram but here to be in very nutshell the simple thing is that the field of experience of sender and receiver should match for the communication to be fruitful and successful so in the last point i mentioned the concept of noise the concept of interference and field of experience were included so let us study all these concepts because the previous part explains the process of communication which we have already studied many times noise is a non intelligent interruption in the message process it can happen any point of process and acts to blot out the part or all of the message noise can be of any types already mentioned in the previous videos and talked about in the previous model then concept of interference it's an intelligent interruption in the message process in other ways alternative messages that confuse the receiver see the difference between noise and interference he wanted to mention was noise is something which is a not wanted part which is disturbing the process whereas this is also an kind of an interruption but maybe it adds uh, sometimes to the effectiveness of the message or maybe it can confuse the receiver that is simply noise is not required at it may be required it may be not it may be required it may be not required depending upon the type of communication or the thing that the communication actually happening at that particular time now let us come to the most important part of this model that is the field of experience that is the psychological frame of mind of the sender and the receiver it is said by 1971 scram published the updated version of his model wherein he included the concept of field of experiences or the psychological frame of reference within which the communication occurs it is this field of experience that broadened the concept of a common field of understanding between the sender and the receiver 
and individual's experience, culture, background, or what is communication level. So it should match, and if it does not match, the communication can never occur. The communication between people can only be smooth when the sender's field of reference and the receiver's field of experience must overlap. At least to the extent of having a common language. There should be a common language. If you say there is no common background or culture is not the same, the age group is not the same. But yes, the most basic thing that is required is the language. I am speaking in English. You are not understanding or maybe I am speaking in some regional language which you are not able to understand that it would create a problem. Why I have chosen English language because it is usually understood by people of all the cultures or all the religions and all the areas. But if I chose any other regional language it would become difficult for you to understand. And along with my audio I have put the PPTs which you can also use as a reference. So that is why a common language is should be there. Once the common language is there then there has to be a common field of experiences, maybe the age, the knowledge background or something matching has to be there. Otherwise, the communication can occur at, um, or else there would be a lot of gaps. Imagine, like I just said, the language that we I am making a video and you are studying is same. Second thing is, I am here to deliver this lecture and you are there to understand this concept as you have enrolled in this particular program. So you understand that why you are studying this model. Imagine I am sending this to a person whose language might be same but he has no idea that why he is studying this model of communication or why he is watching actually this video out of any context. So there would be obviously a lot of communication gap and frustration from the receivers and then why the hell I am watching this video. So there has to be some matching of the purpose, some matching in culture, language, knowledge, only then communication would happen. So an absence of this common field of experience could contribute to a lack of understanding or a variety of noises that emanate from a misunderstood communication. This model which was initially developed as a linear model by Shannon and Weaver with the gradual changes that Scram developed were considered to be an interactional model. Wilbur Schramm stated that communicators communicate their messages based on their field of experience. The receivers of this message have their own field of experience while decoding this message and giving a feedback. The more the field of experiences overlap, the better the understanding of the messages. The less they overlap, there would be always gaps. Now let us uh, study the last video, uh, last model of this video that is model given by David Burlow. It was it is known as SMCR model. The David Burlow model of communication also known as SMCR model was proposed by David Burlow a communication theorist in 1960. It provides a framework for understanding the process of communication and highlights the different elements involved. The model is based on four more main components known as SMCR. This is the model given by David Burdo that is SMCR, source, message, channel and receiver. Here source and receiver are the same in their standings that is communication skills, attitude, knowledge, social system and culture. Then message has been broken down into content, element, treatment, structure and code. Channel is hearing, seeing, touching, smelling and tasting. We have just studied Wilbur Schramm's model. This model of David Burlow just extends this of Schramm's model. That is the concept of field of experience that we studied in the last model has been further amplified by Burlow's SMCR model. You see what David Burlow has done is that he has broken down the field of experience, the communication skills that is of sender and receiver should match, that is the language, then the attitude of them. Like if source is sending the message then receiver should have an attitude to receive the message. A teacher is there in the class to teach and the receiver's children are there to study. But if the attitude do not match then obviously communication can never happen. A parent, father, mother or parents or guardians, they want 
to make their child understand about the good values but the attitude of the child is not of receiving side then obviously there would be a lot of communication gap though their language is same they are part of the same social system they are part of the same culture but their attitude is not matching so the communication gap happens then the knowledge level of sender and receiver should match so burlo has given certain parameters on which sender and receiver should match only then this communication could, would happen see here in the last all models we had studied the movement of the messages that how sender sends the message how it is being molded by the sender maybe transmitted by the sender received by the sender then the de receiver then decoded and then giving the feedback this model is quite different it actually talks about the prerequisites of a communication it is shifting the focus from how to communicate to why to communicate that why is that how we can make the communication more effective what are the prerequisites for making a communication effective not the channel not the traditional channels oral written or maybe some visual or text messages that uh, burlo is talking about he is talking about that when we try to when sender and receiver try to match in their understanding levels in their knowledge and their attitude and the social system so it's not through different types of communication channels they are receiving the message but they are also receiving the message from looking at each other touching smelling that is the non verbal aspect also this is the only model that talks about the non verbal aspect of communication uh, that is it's not only through oral or written communication we are sending or receiving the messages but through non verbal aspects seeing each other touching smelling tasting and hearing are also an integral part of the communication this is what burlo emphasized now let us talk about the different elements one by one the source refers to the sender or communicator who initiates the process the source formulates the message and intends to convey it to the receiver the source characteristics such as their knowledge attitude and communication skills influence how the message is constructed and transmitted encoder the encoder is responsible for converting the message into a form that can be transmitted to the receiver this process involves selecting symbols language and other means to convey the intended messages then we have a message which has been broken down into various forms that is the element the treatment that we give and the channel here represents not only the written letter or any kind of face to face conversation but it represents the various senses that we are using and the receiver should also be matching on the basis of their knowledge experiences and the cultural breakdowns in addition to this particular model burlo also has contributed to the field of communication through his books that is the process of communication which became widely used as book in communication study studies he explored topics such as the nature of human communication communication barriers and effective communication strategies so what uh, burlo tried to create this model was not how to send the message but what are the prerequisites of sending the message it is not the channel or it is not what the message you are sending it is the psychological aspect more of a cultural aspect and it's not the traditional channels that are being used but the non verbal channels are also equally important the way you speak the way you smile and uh, the hearing the touching the tasting the smelling are also equally important while sending and receiving the message obviously if you are standing in a very awkward situation where the environment is not very clean and dirty and it's stinking obviously you will not feel like communicating to anyone and you'll feel like moving to an environment or a place which is good to work which is good to talk and where you can sit and stand so this is what he emphasized on not uh, the physical aspect but the psychological aspect more of the cultural aspect that this should also be similar only then communication can happen and burlos is the only model that uh, talks about the cultural and the psychological aspect dosh kram specified the importance of field of experience but that particular field of experience was broken down by burlo in his work 
so here i end this lecture and in this video we have studied uh, aristotle's model lossell's model shannon and weaver model osgood's model wilbershkram model and david borlow's smcr model in my next video we will be studying the rest of the videos so thank you